It's another day in paradise. This is the eighth wonder of the world. Welcome. Uh, today, or oh, as you can see, um, first time I got a mic, so I'm testing it out. So I'm testing my mic out. Um, instead of using my internal microphone on my uh, MacBook, I'm pretty much now... Um, this is a condenser mic. It's a Rode NT1. So I'm pretty much I'm testing it for the day. Um, I'm getting more conscious of, you know, getting more in a in an area where, um, like like the other other show I, I did, I left the fan on and I can hear the the wind from the fan spinning. So so I got this. So now I'm learning, you know, pretty much the tricks of the trade. Um, I got this hooked up to a preamp, a Yamaha. MG10 XU so um, I got that hooked up to see how it sounds the clarity for this show and this show is another five new stocks added to my $9,000 Robinhood app portfolio stocks index funds currency ETFs precious metals ETFs Bonds, ETFs, and REITs, my favorite. So I got a strategy, my strategy real fast. Um, it's pretty much, I take 100% or $1,000, and I just break them up into three main categories. The first one is stocks, and I invest 60% stocks. And within stock, I will... I, also apply this to global stocks so what I do with these two categories is um, pretty much there's two types It's the fast growth valuation with no dividends those are all your fang stocks and then you have your second category which are your slow growth valuation with dividends so I invest in both I know there's a lot of investors they like um, the fast growth with no dividends that's that's fine with they just like that that feeling that style and then you have some investors that are slow growth valuation with dividends. They call themselves dividend dividend investors. I'm pretty much both. So and my strategy is just to cover all spectrums within the stock market. So and to see analyze it from that perspective. Okay, the second category is uh thirty percent and that allocates I'll allocate six hundred dollars and then I'll do three hundred dollars for the fast growth valuation and then three hundred dollars for the slow growth valuation with dividends and then the second category is 30 percent index funds um with that which is 300 with that 300 i'll cut it in half uh 150 i will invest in iShares, spdr and s p and vanguard so with those since those are the top three um I'll invest in ETFs within those three companies. Next, within that same that same uh, category, index funds, um, I'll take the remaining 150 and I'll invest it into precious metals ETFs, currency ETFs, buyback ETFs, and bonds ETFs. So those are things I'm learning now. Um, you know with precious metals how everything's connecting um pretty much the the ingredients i'm more learning how to invest more like from the ingredients like lithium you know now that people are paying attention but elect electricity companies need them uh companies that have like batteries everything comes from lithium so um there's two companies that i bought uh this month i'll show you one of them after um, I'm finished with uh, telling you guys about my strategy. Um, and then lastly, um, the remaining 10%, which is $100. So that comes out to the 100%. And then that's the whole $1,000. So that's the way I allocate it, the way I invest. And REITs are known as for their monthly dividends because most stocks and index funds and ETFs they pay dividends every three months so every three months that's when you get the big pay that pay payouts so with REITs pretty much my strategy is to buy assets you know 
within you know month one and two before we I hit those quarter months. So that's that's the thing about um, uh, REITs and my strategy on that. So and that and that's how I'm able to build even. You know, I'm more like more focused on the on it being solid. So that's the type of that, like how I'm feeling about it is building the foundation up for it. So uh, we'll see here. Yeah, that's pretty much that. That's my strategy. I currently have 100 and show you guys 133 assets. <laughs> And not including these are newer assets. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, so basically, I got 119 assets. I must. I'm gonna add these cryptos currencies as um, assets. So, but 113 assets, stocks, and then plus six cryptocurrencies. Because look, look, this is even though this is when you see this color, that's they're going down. But when you see the green, it's up. You know, just like on stocks, you see that red, you know, it's just that's the only difference I see. Like green is up and it's kind of like a like an off green. That's like a green, green and red, like old school style green. And then this is like I call it new age colors. <laughs> they more pop out like they got a little bit more contrast to them, like light. So. So I have one hundred and nineteen assets under management and I. And they range from 1,000 1, 000 all the way down to 50 cents. So I don't discriminate, like, because my dividends buy all, you know, these assets, whether they're stocks, index funds, ETFs, or REITs. As you can see, it goes all the way, all the way down here. I don't know why it stopped moving. Okay. Oh, I flipped it all the way down, all the way down to 50 cents right there. So, and, and a lot of people, they, they ask me like, how am I able to do that? I use, well, I just built it up little by little, but now I use trade base. It's a uh, Robin hood. Uh, it breaks down, um, your portfolio. If you have a Robin Hood, if you're active in Robin Hood, so I use Trade Base, and it shows like pretty much it it shows you how many assets you got, it shows you like uh, company for company, you know, from highest valuation to lowest. Um, it shows like pie pie charts of like the sectors, like what sectors uh, you're invested in. Then it even breaks it breaks it down into like um, the caps, like mega, large, small, nano. Um, so it breaks it down in those type of caps and then what was the third cap i have to look at it again but they give you three pies i know one's for sector one's for the cap and then the third one i can't think of it right now off the top of my head so trying to get rid of that okay so let's jump into it these are another five new stocks added to my nine thousand dollar portfolio oh pretty much in the all that's where I'm at now so I'm at nine percent uh, for Friday it's not bad and pretty much when the screen goes black uh, that's pretty much that's the end I'm I'm in California so at three o'clock p.m. so in about two minutes the screen is gonna go from white to black so that's something another thing that I you know noticed being on this uh, platform robin hood has taught me everything about the stock market game plus youtubers you know i want to thank all the, the brave youtubers that that show their portfolio and show show people like how it's done you know i think it'll give people more courage to do this you know and you pretty much you come up once you you build the way you want to build not you know you can you can piggyback off other ideas or like oh okay kind of like a guide but once you really understand like how it works you'll you can start breaking it the way you want to or put in electricity or doing some um uh, making making it out like quantum physics or i mean it's to me it's a whole nother world of science even though it's numbers but it just took my 
level of business to a whole nother level. Like, and it's teaching me about other companies out there in the world, um, the sectors. I have, an, I have now 60 sectors, which let me go through. The, let me explain like how stock market. Go a little bit of thorough before I jump into it. Because the way they have the sectors. Okay, let me see how many sectors they have. One, two. Let me get back up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the way I got like financials, I got that as a sector. Healthcare, I got that. Then I got it under pharmaceutical. Now, the consume, uh, consumer discretionary, that is broken down in so many different parts. So as you can see, I have 65 and they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 sectors. So I pretty much, I'm breaking it down to, to the nitty gritty, like the auto industry sector, supermarket sector, uh, fashion sector. Uh, water sector, sugar sector, coffee sector, uh, travel sector, pharmaceutical sector, index funds sector. And then I break that down to like um, atomic number sector, like uh, precious metals, lithium, uranium. Like I'm breaking it down like pretty much so I can see the clarity. Because in here it's just so vague. But once you like break these even down, you can, you can pretty much, you have a different, mindset on how you looking at how you look at pretty much the stock market just diff, different lenses than everybody else so I just wanted to share that right real quick okay let's jump into it okay markets uh, closed so uh, the first new asset added to my portfolio is Sociedad Quimica y Manera this is a, a lithium company I was telling you about earlier I'm just trying to move that out the way. So as you can see, the, uh, the peak for this company is about $62. 53 people own Sociedad Química y Manera on Robinhood. Uh, current market price, $36. Um, I bought mine at 38 so I'm down about $1.88 about about Sociedad Química y Manera de Chile SA engages in the production and distribution of fertilizers, potassium nitrate, iodine and lithium chemicals it operates through the following six segments specialty plant nutrients industrial chemicals iodine and derivatives lithium and derivatives potassium potassium and other products and services the specialty plant nutrient segment produces potassium nitrate sodium nitrate sodium potassium nitrate and specialty blends the industrial chemical the industrial chemical segment offers industrial chemicals including sodium nitrate potassium nitrate and boric acid the iodine and derivative segment manufactures iodine and iodine derivatives which are used in a wide range of medical pharmaceutical agricultural and industrial applications the lithium and derivative segments cover lithium carbonate for electrochemical materials for batteries fritz for the cer ceramic and enam enamel industries heating resistant glass air conditioning chemicals continuous casting powder for steel extrusion primary aluminum smelting processing pharmaceuticals and lithium derivatives the potassium segment produces potassium chloride and potassium sulfate the other products and services segment deals with other fertilizers and blends the company was founded june 17 1968 and is headquartered in santiago chile so this is part of my global stock investing strategy. So I got a, a, a one company, one share of this company. Uh, the current CEO is Richard Ramos Rodriguez. Employees five thousand two hundred and ninety. Headquarters Santiago, 
Chile, founded in 1968, market cap 4.28 billion, PE ratio 21.92, dividend yield not listed. This is interesting. Um, buy 33%, hold 58%, sell 8%, and that's the analysis rating from. I look at everything. You know, a lot of people don't use it, but I use it like as a gauge. Um, just something to give me reference to where it's at. And I make my decisions off that. The, the culmination of all the information that I'm getting. But as you can see, this is the lithium. Um, the lithium suppliers. And this is interesting, you know, me being back on health again and, and making my meals and learning about potassium is good for the nervous system, but, you know, for electricity. But now I understand, I'm starting to see like, okay, electricity, potassium, you know, like that all plays, like it plays a role. And I was just thinking to myself, okay, what if I up my potassium? Would I, like, would, would I be think faster in my thinking? So it's just something, you know, it's, and see, and these... These ideas come to me because I'm investing in companies that people have never heard of or never would ever even think of. So it just I like it, too, because it forces me to think, find ideas that people are not even there. Everybody's in the same. What is it? The same box. They're playing in the same box, the, sa the same sandbox and nobody's going out of it. They're like, oh, it's so saturated. So that's, you know, that's pretty much um, one of the big, big well, probably the real reason that, you know, I've always been like this. I'm an explorer by heart. So this is even, yeah, the fundamentals, I understand it. But to me, it's boring. So, you know, me going out and exploring other companies and investing in them and learning and reading about it, it just gives me a different um, different mindset about it and what's going on in the world and, you know, who's doing what. Not just, okay, these... People, it just feels so limited, you know, people, um, it's just, to me, it just doesn't feel like there's any substance. It's just, every day, I just feel like I'm hearing the same crap, you know, it's just the same, same crap that people are just, just spitting out of their mouths. So, okay, that's the first asset added. The second asset added to my portfolio is... Allergy season out here in California. Alexa, what's the allergy count today? This might answer your question. Today in Concord, California, there will be low pollen levels overall. Okay, low pollen levels. So I got the sniffles here and there. Okay, the second company, uh, second asset that I added to my portfolio is JNK. <laughs> And this is a SPDR, Bloomberg Barclays High Yield Bond ETF. So this is the bond, uh, bonds ETF I was talking about. So pretty much this is my portfolio has a, div a diversity in it. And this is for me because I'm working on my uh, my uh, my percentage annually. So I'm just all about getting getting my getting my percentage up so I can play the game of seventy two. <laughs> Let's look at the five year. Well, yeah, these are bonds. So it peaked back in June 27th, 2014th at about $42. 2017 people own SPDR, Bloomberg Barclays, high yield bond ETF on Robinhood. My allergies, grass, it's not trees, it's, I'm allergic to grass. Uh, market. Current market price, $36. So I bought mine. Uh, I bought a share of this bond ETF for 36 About. JNK tracks a market-weighted index of high liquid, high yield, U.S. dollar denominated corporate bonds. Uh, market cap, $9.78 billion. P.E. ratio, not listed. Dividend yield five point nine three, so anything higher than a three is, is I'm just gonna be collecting, collecting and buying. So, and then another statistic I st I'm starting to look at is the fifty two week high thirty six dollars, fifty two week low thirty two, and that's pretty much when I, 
when I want to purchase a company, I look at that. Because usually if I'm in the high, I'll, I, I, I tend to wait till it drops either in the, in the middle or it drops down to its low beyond that. And I'll pick it up even quicker. So that's my second asset added to my portfolio, which is a bond ETF. And that and that strategy is just to um, when we when 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 we're in the down market bear market correction that I just want to keep my portfolio up, just keep it afloat. Okay, the third asset is DMP, which is Power Shares DB Precious Metals Fund. So I got this. Let me go to this five year. I got this one due to. Um, because I'm investing in precious metals. Uh the next next show I'll show you the bars. I just today was setting up the equipment. So I know I said something last um the show I did yesterday about showing you guys the uh precious metals that I'm investing in um physical. So it's just a different cuz I I the market's cool and everything. I just I I, I have like backups to I have emergencies to my emergencies like people like me it's just it's this the stock market for me is an allocation but I have my money I don't put everything into the market I like like I'm looking at it okay I'll do I do a thousand I do a thousand a month but more than that I just don't see like I can like the other pretty much my other allocation of it of my money goes into uh, precious metals physical um, land and then uh, I'm in the process of saving for uh, my logistics business. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna own like uh, probably a semi truck, eighteen wheeler. So I'll probably get one and then just build from there. So um, that's why I don't have everything going into like this is just something this is teaching me about life but there's still other things like yeah it's cool i don't want to just spend all my time on here it's cool like when i buy new companies monthly but my you know my main focus is just to stay active you know and i love and i love this because it's teaching me um about investing it's teaching me about interest it's teaching me about how um other institutions and agencies how they get us for interest like they pl they're playing this the, the rule of 72 we don't think about it but if we don't use like if we don't know then we'll get got you know and that that's what i've been learning about uh credit now like an idea came to me i'm like i you know if i'm gonna build credit i might as well take the credit that they give me because it's really a lot of people like yo what can i do with credit you know and, and i feel them like yeah I start a business but to me that's too risky you know to start to start your business on credit you it's better to have money that you have saved and start it because it force because it's nothing was given it's something that i worked hard for it's over here so you're going to be more conscious of not making those you, you're just going to be more on the ball and i've noticed that but you know with credit's like ah oh, you know you're not really thinking but now the way i'm thinking about credit is get it and then purchase precious metals silver uh gold now there's platinum and then there's palladium so those four I see. So little by little, what I did, I started out with silver. So I started out with silver and um, I worked my way up, just like how I'm doing in the stock market. Buy companies. I remember I started out with $100. And with $100, I bought two shares of Coke, two shares of Sony, and then two shares of Nike. So I remember starting out and I... I started out that and then from there I just I never I didn't touch it I didn't sell it I'm not in that game where you know like everybody sold their Netflix I still got my Netflix you know it's just got one I don't want to be in that crowd where you're stressing like that and no once I got it I got it you know I'm here to build you know I'm not here to you know because you did one little error or mistake oh I'm gonna I don't know it's just a different it's a different concept that I'm playing um with the stock market and I think like the way they play it, they they scare a lot of people away from it instead of showing them like what this game is really about. It's about you building, you having interest working for you because where else are you going to have interest working for you besides like a savings account? They get like 2%, 1%, 2%, 1%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%
you know and even even me now i have a uh, a savings account that is that's collecting two percent you know i'm playing that game like a cash cash reserves i got the index fund i got property precious metals my business so now i'm allocating all the, all these places are getting it monthly not every like i see a lot some um investors they take everything and then like boom into the stock market so i mean it, you could play that game it's cool but i just what if the stock market goes out and you put everything in there you didn't you didn't buy any you don't have any gold bars like you, nobody knows the future like i hope this goes on forever but it's just for now you know know how to play the game and the way i played it the way i'm playing this now is pretty much my childhood how i was as a kid i'm bringing those those concepts back like with monopoly <laughs> i remember in monopoly i would land on something and i would buy it i was just buying i just wanted to have you know because once you have people always was landing on it oh shit pay me Psh, pay me even if it was small you you were still getting you know instead of like you know i even tried out every, people strategy on you know, I'll hold for broad uh boardwalk and park place you know the two most expensive the most luxurious i always bought everything else. like it always seems like i bought everything else and i never could buy those two but it was cool because no it, those are harder to land on all the other ones you're gonna land on those daily anytime you come around you're gonna land on them because they're common those are like not common so that's how i'm kind of i'm i took that concept as a kid and i'm uh investing in the uh stock market that way i see a company i just buy a share and let's start playing the the compound interest game that's it it's so simple it's it's simple and then you can watch it grow you know i mean the more you put into it cool you know people they it, it, they're overwhelmed they're like yeah 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 they'll take one company with dip i mean you have the dividend style investors then you have the like the fast the fa the the growth uh, the fast growth valuation with no dividend type investors those two are cool i like them both i like them both because they're both growing they just have their own different styles but to have that mixed into your portfolio with etfs all the different styles of etfs and then reits you know and that's pretty much my my strategy on on how I'm investing and I tell you like <sighs> amazing it's it's open my eyes are open and I'm learning so pretty much this power shares DB precious metals fund um let me see where it peaked It peaked back July 11, 2014 at $43. 30 people own PowerShares DB, Precious Metals Fund on Robinhood. <laughs> Excuse me. Current market price, $36. So I bought mine at $36 also. About DBP tracks an index of gold and silver future contracts. It optimizes its contract selection based on the shape of the futures curve to minimize contango hmm, whatever that means hold on let's look that up it's all about practice what you preach edit pace Con contango is a situation where the future price of a commodity is above the expected spot price hmm contango refers to a situation where the future spot price is below the current price and people are willing to pay more for a commodity at some point in the future than the actual expected price of the commodity okay i'm playing that game too with uh with gold let me show you guys like explain uh, what i what am i using amex this is print i use these guys to buy my uh okay pretty much silver Let me see what I bought. Let me see if they show the charts. No, that's on the phone. Oh. Okay, I go to. I'm gonna go to all. As you can see, like it, it peaked. Platinum peaked on at two thousand. So as you can, fifteen to two thousand, and I bought my 
um, platinum at about eight hundred and fifty dollars. So you see that leeway. So that's probably what they were saying about contango. Like you're expected to for it to hit that price again. So that's the game that I'm playing with. That even look check out silver. I mean gold. Okay, gold. Let's go to the all. Yeah, about f above 15. So, I mean, damn, I wish I would have been braver back here, but look at that. Like, right now it's about 12, you know, but I'm still, that's like $100 a month for gold now. But as you can see, the peak's about 15, 16, 16, 17, it says. And then... This is what I started off. This is how I built my courage through silver. That's just anybody like if you want to start to play the the precious metals f physical game, go with the silver. See a peak that I bought mine probably about twelve thirteen dollars, and I was like fifteen, but still like the peak it peaked at about forty. So, so I, I worked my way up to one, about one ounce. I bought five ounces and then I bought a 10 ounce. So t you do the 10 times how I how I got to 10 ounces by about 15, 10 times 15 equals about $150 I paid for a 10 ounce. So, which I, as you can see, the contango is for forty dollars. It's a new term I learned today. Wow. Okay. Let's get back to uh, the uh, power shares DB Precious Metals Fund. So market pro market cap one hundred seven point thirty nine million. PE ratio not listed. Dividend yield zero. Fifty two week high. Thirty eight point seventy nine. Fifty two week low. Thirty three dollars and 98 cents so that's the third asset added to my portfolio the fourth asset is one two three four and this is a, a buyback ETF so this is another super trooper in my portfolio this is power shares international buyback achievers ETF power shares is owned by Invesco in Atlanta, Georgia. So that's just something new I learned about them. So I got the five year. Uh, it's peak $40. Current market price uh, about $32. 41 people own PowerShares International Buyback Achievers ETF on Robinhood. About uh, I, picked, I picked up uh a share for about $32 about IPKW tracks a modified market cap weighted index of international securities from developed and emerging markets that have reduced their outstanding shares by at least 5% in the past year market cap 180.93 million PE ratio 17.71 dividend yield these are nice 3.11 so uh, 52 week high $39 52 week low 27 so I caught about in the middle at about 32 okay last but not least the fifth asset ad added to my portfolio one two three four five this is uh, a energy company PG&E um, me being a student out here in uh, San Francisco a film student I've seen th this logo everywhere so that's and this is you know it's out here in San Francisco so I pretty much I saw it and I was like even though they're going through hella um, what's the word um, right now they're not in a position like they're they're like in a GE position where all their their earnings are down um, they're not they were given a, a a dividend but 
they're not because of the pretty much the I guess the merger or they might be getting bought out or bankruptcy that they're going through so I mean I just see how powerful you know this this company is around here let's go to the five year you see the drops like the last peak on September 15th 2017 at $70 I mean this is you see it boom hit rock bottom there at $7 um, I picked up at 19 so I'm up now $4 so it's it seems like it's bouncing back um, and look how many people own it 20,304 people own PG&E on Robinhood about PG&E Corporation also called PG and E is a holding company which engages in gen generation transmission and distribution of electricity and natural gas to consumers the firm specializes in energy utility power gas electricity solar and s sustainability the company was founded in 1995 and is headquartered in San Francisco, California. Current CEO is John R. Simon. Employees, 24,000. Headquarters, San Francisco, California. Founded in 1995. Market cap, 12.01 billion. P.E. ratio, not listed. Dividend yield, zero. So, um, with my dividends, I bought this company as you can see 20 bucks so 13% buy 80% hold 7% sell so that's what another analytics that I saw like I was like okay the hold is very high so and then I saw the price I was like oh, I gotta grab it and then now I'm seeing seeing the benefits up $4 up 22% so there you have it. Those are the five new assets added to my portfolio tomorrow. I'll give you the remaining five. Um, with that, I'll also show you guys uh, my precious metals bars that I get from Ape App Appmex. So I think it's um, a 10 or 20 ounce of silver. And then I got um, a one ounce of platinum my next since I'm moving up little by little my next bar for next year or if if I get it rocking where because I'm paying my silver my precious metal bars with credit so once I get those those cards paid down I'll go ahead and re-up again so and then this time um I plan on buying uh, uh, a troy ounce of gold so see how that goes to incorporate you know with with this style and go from there so if you got any questions any comments leave them down below until next time let compound interest speak for you Alexa smile